We're delighted at Ormston House to be the festival hub for Open House Limerick this year and we love the theme architecture as story. Actually over the last number of years we've been gathering all the stories about the history of this building. One of the stories we're working on at the moment is the fact that Jack Ormston opened the first supermarket in Limerick in this building and he actually brought in some of the original adverts from that time in the early 1960s and the slogan was, if you haven't visited us yet, you're robbing your husband. So, Neve and I are curating a project around what would a feminist supermarket look like and how would that work. Back in those days you would have had to give your, your shopping list essentially to someone working in the supermarket and they would find all your items for you. And um, This was the first um, supermarket in Limerick where you could actually pick the goods off the shelf yourself. And people also remember when it was a supermarket. So they come in and tell us stories of when they were this high and they came in and, you know, the, the building was painted, it was two shades of pink and a sort of a, a, a red lino on, on the floor. And we have photographs from that period. So, I mean, it's really quite astonishing to, to look back at, uh, at it now. But people also had really, really fond memories of either working here or coming in as, as customers. Someone broke into the supermarket and stole cigars and wigs and, and, and was caught and subsequently went to court. But just, I, I just, it conjures an image to me of someone stealing cigars and wigs. I am <laughs> really fabulous. <laughs> So the work kind of manipulates the cognitive processes. So I'm using perspective lines and the available light in the space to really manipulate and alter the space that we're looking at. So I like to think that the work adopts the architectural spaces that it occupies. Uh, I'm very interested in how you know, modern public spaces are used and maybe even how they're designed in that they're quite instructive and that they lead people around the space. Yeah, my favourite piece that I've done has to have been my duration, yeah, which was recent enough, uh, that incorporated a number of walls. So the more walls and corners I have in a space, the better effect, illusionary effects I can get. What I'm hoping to achieve by installing these in public spaces is that it's kind of just a little break in how you see the space. Um, it's a little break from the instructive nature of public spaces. I'm Natasha and I'm married to Sean and we bought this site two years ago. Um, it came up very suddenly. I had been looking for a long time for a site with land um, because we're both vets and we like animals and the idea was to be able to have horses and cattle and chickens and our own existing two dogs and three cats in a more comfortable setup. So we bought um, the site, we were thrilled with it um, and then we contacted Jim, the architect who um, drew up this house plan. It wasn't at all that I had envisaged. Um, I wasn't interested in contemporary but Jim does contemporary and it just grew that we grew into it, we started really loving it, loving the idea. Yeah. The initial plan, he had built a square house around a courtyard, and I said I didn't ask for a courtyard, that's... <laughs> I don't want it to get out, so we took it out from the second plan, and I said, oh, I missed the courtyard, can you put it back in, so we did. Yeah, it's just, a, it's a relatively small house, we didn't want any extra rooms, and um, you know, there's one sitting room, there's, um, we just wanted everything to be very functional. Um, we also wanted stables, um, so Jim designed those for us too. Yeah, we're settling in. No broadband, no TV, but other than that, um, the animals are very settled. Um, we have a dog door that the dogs and cats can go through, and the house is very functional, it works for them. I suppose at, at, at the moment it's all new, and I love every room almost equally. Um, I suppose we put so much time and effort into the thought process behind it, everything's very functional. I love our bedroom, I love having a walk-in wardrobe come in, that's handy. Two saints in the ensuite, marriage saver. I actually haven't heard of open house before, and the architect told me about it, and it's a very interesting concept. I mean, people are naturally curious, um, and I also visited my friends when I wanted to get little tips. I mean, I might go to one house and see a tall outlet, and I might see, you know, a door handle, like, it's just the little things. But um, that, I suppose it's about the architecture in this house. I mean, it is, But um, no, we're very sad to be very happy. The 
there is a vibrant working dock here, which has been in existence since the 1850s. And as you passed by on the road, you may not even realise that. 363 days in the year, well, everybody gets on well. They're on. Bit of banter, you know, can't beat it. Richie, how's it going? Yeah, he's going away home now. <laughs> the Graven Dock used to be used for swimming gales way back. Dock clock, which was 1880 odd, and still working, bang on time. There's four faces on it, so that you can tell the time from anywhere. Those two are listed, uh, and the clock, they're all protected. This is Rank Silo here. At one stage, it was one of the largest flour mills in the British Isles. Some people run about this haunted house thing. They wanted to do that in there, but for health and safety, it wasn't. It wouldn't be the best. About 27 metres of steel bins like that, and they hold the grain. And when this building was full, there used to be a, a bridge over the road, which was elevated across to the remainder of the facilities. One of the biggest in the British Isles, once. Yeah. This is my little kingdom here. And I keep an eye on it as best I can. Well, for us, it was all about we spent an awful lot of time, and we did in the previous house before it was renovated in the kitchen. You know, the weekends were spent in the kitchen. You know, okay, you go in, in the evenings maybe to watch a bit of TV, wouldn't that be right? Yes, and, and, yeah. and, you know, when you look back at the photographs or the videos we have, like the, we did have all the kids here and, uh, you know, there's some really fabulous memories. And I remember we, we were lucky in the sense when this house was built originally, my dad and mum lived further on in the state where my mum and my dad passed away. But he used to be coming up as the house was being built. And he'd be much his house as he, house he, he was very much area. his house. Like yeah. he'd take he he'd go and he'd make sure, you know, that they were doing it right or the way the doors were hanged. And that's one thing I suppose with the extension we kinda go, God, my, we my missed him. Because well, you yeah. know, even though we didn't need to keep an eye on them in fairness, but he, he was always interested. It was funny, I think the funniest thing that happened building the house was when um, the builder was here a couple of times when they, they said to me, you know, as we go through the house, you know, if we see kind of picture hooks and we'll just take them out and fill them in and you can go back and do it again. And we said that's because that's your paint in the house, but it was funny, he said to me about a month ago, he said, did someone else help you put the hooks up and put the pictures up? Because some of them are really professionally done. And it was aren't so well done. So I'm not the, I'm the ones, I was the ones that weren't so well done, because my dad was fantastic with his hands and I'm not like, but it was kind of poignant as well, thinking like, you know, even though yeah. they're both gone now, there's a big legacy left afterwards, you know, and he was laughing. He said, you, do you get someone to come in? I said, yeah, actually, yeah. So it was funny, you know. And, and as time goes that, you kind of realise, you know, it would be great to have them here to kind of help us, yeah. to, to, but, you know, and give us advice and stuff. But we didn't really need them because we got such great help. We did. Project. And, and, and when you think about the house as well, when we started, when we moved in first, Just we'd us. hold the all our family get-togethers here initially and mm -hmm. um, because I, I you know I've good a good few brothers and sisters and they've kids and stuff and then as their kids start to get old we kind of said we can't do it anymore we just didn't have the space so to we end up start doing family okay yeah. that's like the extension so we can have a party I, yeah. I know but that's part of it because yeah, you know true, we, we, you know true, true. that's kind of where we you know like having having the family over and it's, it this gives us really that kind of workable space does, really you know where you live is so important to how you feel and and how you feel about everything i think so mm. you know if it's so important to you to have that space and that light in your life i think it's worth doing yeah I and mean, it's easy to look at the negatives but the positives way out yeah way really outnumber the negatives and it can be done, you know, as I said, we, we're, we're a busy, small family, you know, we're doing a bit of travel with work, but it all gets, you know, it gets done, living ahead, I suppose, and, and yeah. deep, deep breaths every occasion. And we're good partners, we're good, we're good yeah. people, you know, architects will help you reach a vision, will help you, you know, understand the possibilities of good trades and good yeah. trades people, I think it's, it's all achievable. It is, it is definitely. It's, it's definitely Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm Barbara Carr of Carr Architects and myself and Seamus, my husband, work together. So this design for this house is, is his. 
as often happens with us. He starts with an idea, I then run with it. The site itself really drives an awful lot of the design as this one is. In this case also the, the client came with a very clear idea that he wanted a lower energy and passive house. I, I do think about how the, work, the house works on a moment-to-moment a -moment basis, but then to get a little bit of magic. You know, so, so areas that you might think, well you don't actually need this, but actually putting a window seat there with a view that somebody can just sit at and maybe watch the rest of the family go by. The friends that will come, the places where they'll have a party. You know, sometimes maybe, maybe opening up a room or having an extra big hall or a space that opens out into the garden where they can see this is where we'll have kids parties or a barbecue or Christmas or a Christmas. You know, all those kind of events uh, are quite part of the house's story or will become part of it. I, I think open house has been brilliant for people to come in to a space and see different people's homes, different people's different buildings as well. The other lovely thing is that it opens up buildings that wouldn't normally be opened. I suppose to give them inspiration. For me the value of open house is that people see the value of design and how if you're building a certain square footage on a certain budget you can get a much better result for your budget and that area if you have somebody put some design and input into it or bring your dreams alive. Donald Madigan, the Managing Director of MNC Property and we moved into this building in uh, November 2000 and, uh, 2015. We moved from a smaller office on O'Connell Street into what, 8,000 square feet of a, of a church so um, we were outgrowing, completely outgrowing where we were so it was good to get the space that we have and, and the, the working environment and it's a lovely it's a lovely building, it's very bright, the glass roof and the stained glass window um, really make it a nice place, to, nice place to work. It had been vacant for about three years before we moved in and when we moved in it wasn't as nice and clean and presentable as it is now so we did a good bit of work just to bring it back to what it is now. We, we painted the whole place, painted the roof, changed the carpets and just um, kind of upgraded the, upgraded the whole place really. It's, it's lovely, I think people enjoy working here and we always wanted the open plan office and we, we have best of both worlds where we've got meeting rooms and offices on this level and we've got entirely open plan upstairs but it works. It's the light that that throws in and when you come out during the day and you see the colours all over the floor um, I think that's, that's one of the nicest features. The other nice thing is when people come in people don't know what to expect and pretty much everybody walks in the door and looks up and looks around and is you know, it's pretty impressed with what, they, with what they see so from that perspective it's good. The house is an original terraced house. So we as the Arts Office team, we work here. So we come in every day and you know, it's like anything, you know, if you have a view of a river, sometimes you don't see it when you're there all the time. So it, we need people to come in and meet here because when they come, they're in such awe of the hand painted wallpaper or the original fireplaces or the height of the skirting board. One time we had this lady call to the door and she said, could I come in? And I said, of course. And she, I said, but you know, it's not a museum anymore. It was originally a museum when it was restored back in the 90s. And she said, well, I actually, I lived here. Her daughter was with her and she wanted to show her daughter where she had lived when she was a nurse over in St. John's. It was really interesting how she brought the house alive in a totally different way. So the room we're in now, this was one person's flat, if you like, and the other part of the reception room was somebody else's. And downstairs in the basement, there were two different flats and it's four stories over the basement. So as you can imagine, there were there must have been a commune here, for, for want of a better word. So we investigated that a little bit, and now we know many of the people who actually lived here, and a lot of them were artists, interestingly enough. Well, one of the team decided on April Fool's Day to take the mannequins and put them at our desks. So we all came in, those mannequins, and we had the best laugh. 